Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to be going through another antenna. Today Chameleon Antenna has provided me this MPAS 2.0 antenna to see what I think about it. Put it to use and uh, let you know what I think. MPAS 2.0, that stands for Modular Portable Antenna System. As far as I can tell, Chameleon built this antenna around 2019. So it's been around for a while. There are a lot of people that are out there using this system. And so I want to find out if this is going to be another antenna system that I can bring with me on my portable operating. I think there are nine ways to put this antenna together. If you can get more use out of one antenna system and you don't have to bring other gear, well, I think that's a good thing. So to start off with, the base of the antenna is the ground spike. Chameleon sells these as different components for different antenna systems. And uh, that's what's gonna work for getting this into the ground for a couple of the configurations. Next on the list is the hybrid micro. This is the five to one transformer. And this is what's gonna get our antenna to match the different bands. The micro is the smaller one. It's good for 100 watt sideband. And there's also the mini, which is the larger size for higher wattage for getting on the air. The part of the hybrid micro is the nut that goes on the bottom. This nut coming off is going to serve a purpose for us later on. Here's where your coax goes on the SO239. And uh, the top, of course, has the shackle. The shackle is a custom uh, piece of hardware, and I'll show you that here in a minute. But the micro itself, the hybrid micro, is set up so that you can attach antenna components to the top of here and mount the bottom screw, the 3 8 inch thread, to the base of your whatever antenna uh, mounting device that you're going to use. Now what's neat about this shackle, this shackle buckle, this thing's actually pretty cool. It's got, it's a swivel uh, drilled into this 3.8 bolt. Um, you can get this on their website. This shackle is going to be useful for putting the antenna up in a couple of different locations. So the main wire for this antenna is 73 feet long. Now the counterpoise is 25 feet of wire that also comes with this antenna. And we're gonna see this put to use in the different configurations. The wire itself's got the uh, little uh, ring terminal on one end of it. See if I can show you this here. And that ring terminal is meant to screw down to the bottom of the hybrid micro or the mini, whichever one that you have. Also in the kit is a 50 foot section of ABR Industries coax with the built-in choke. This is going to be really handy for any RF issues that we might have. Now we're getting to the antenna itself. The first part of the antenna that, depending on the configuration that you have set up, is the antenna mast extension. And these are held together by shock cords so that uh, they can wind together like this and they have a little Velcro strap that holds them together. But this is really handy. This goes on the top of the hybrid mini or micro and then that gets the first part of the antenna. Now the antenna whip itself is made out of brass. It's got brass connections and it's also has shock cords to hold this together so that you're not having a bunch of loose parts running around. So when we're out in the field and I'm setting up the different components, now you know kind of what's involved. So the last part of this kit is the bag that it comes in. This thing is ginormous with a big carry handle and a backpack strap. It even has the cover that you can open up and uh, make this into a backpack where you have straps for your shoulders. This thing is huge, and I suspect that the idea behind this is if you're carrying sleeping bags, pillows, radios, batteries, that you're going to jam all this stuff in here <clears throat> and carry it with you when you're out operating. One thing that I appreciate Chameleon doing is they put manuals in with their antenna system. The different specifications for how you're supposed to operate thing, and it's pretty helpful because the last thing you want to do is put this antenna up in such a way that it doesn't work and you just don't know why. Ideally, if you got the manual on your phone or tablet, it makes it that much better so you're not having to carry this thing around with you when you're out operating. Those are the components. This is what it's all about. Come with me and we're going to go set this up. So the first configuration I'm doing here is the impasse uh, in the vertical configuration. And I've chose this one because, well, it's first on the list and it's uh, simple to put together. Let me show you uh, what's involved with this. It only took me about five minutes to put it together and I was taking my time. For the vertical, we're using the ground stake, the counterpoise, the 25 foot counterpoise. That's going out to the grass area right about out there. And then the five to one transforming unit. This is the hybrid micro. So it's good for hundred Watts. Antenna extension. This is the heavier mast where it goes up to the whip. And from there, the whip carries on to the rest of the way. And that's really it. The coax and the choke are hooked up in line and now we're ready to operate. So I know that I'm gonna need a tuner for any of these deployments. So I ran the meter here so you could just see how it is, generally speaking, on my rig expert. I'm not gonna operate the radio until later on after I decide which 
configuration I want to run with. So let's get on to the next configuration. I'll be hooking my rope up to the shackle here that's part of this assembly. I really like this design setup so that uh, it's easier to get it up in the air. That's going to work great. Now for this setup, the match unit is about 10 feet up in the air and it's suspended in the air with some string to this tree over here. And the far end with the 73 feet of wire is going over to that tree. And there is probably 80 to 90 feet of string just to get it out into the field. The other trees are just too close together, so we're going to use this one that's that far away. So the ground radial is attached to the top of the matching unit, or the bottom of the matching unit, and that's supposed to be on the ground going directly perpendicular with the antenna wire, so they're both going out in the same direction. That's this configuration. The SWR is about the same as it was last time, so we are going to need an external tuner. I wanted to see how this gets put up into the air. It was a pretty easy install to get it up there because you're only going 10 feet, so you don't really need anything that tall to get up in the air, but you're going to need to bring your own string. I happen to have a bunch of paracord and nanocord um, for putting antennas up, so I just grabbed a bundle of that and used the Arborist Weight Kit to throw the antenna string up into the tree. So we've got a couple more configurations to do, but the trees at this park are just a little bit too small, so we're going to head to the next place and try the next setup. Now I'm down here at a different park and the goal here is to do two new configurations. We're going to do the sloper and the inverted L. For the first setup, I'm doing the sloper antenna. And that's going to be 40 feet up into this tree here. And the easiest way I know to get a wire up into the tree is to use the arborist throw bag. It was easier for me to get this direction, so I'm using the same rope for my pull string instead of dragging another rope back and doing it the right way. It was more convenient to do it this way because there were less obstacles as what's inside the little forest here. So I'm using the hybrid micro in this configuration as a ground mounted um, transformer. I'm using the ground spike that comes with it so that's in the ground about eight inches or so. And I'm also using the ground radio which is going to be perpendicular to the antenna wire as it goes up to the top of the tree. I'm approximately 40 feet up in the air which is what the uh, manual says 25 feet to 40 feet or so and I've hooked up to the 50-foot coax that's going to lead back to the tester. I'm going to again run the test on the rig expert. Now I know I'm going to use an external tuner with this antenna. The highest SWR is 3 to 1 on off frequencies, but there are some areas where it's lower. But I already know that I'm going to be using my external tuner if I want to operate with this configuration and this antenna. Now, what I do like about this configuration with the antenna is the fact that it's ground mounted, which means I'm not going to need an extra support to get this antenna operational. I do need one tree. Typically, it's not a big deal for me to find a tree in an area like this. I do like how easy it is to set up this antenna. There's not much to it. As far as being in a park like this, it's not too intrusive, and that's going to make it uh, positive for me in this configuration. All right, so now I've got the inverted L configuration going. So I basically took the uh, sloper and I took it from way over there and I drug it over so it's directly underneath where I had it set up to begin with. So all I had to do is lower it down from the tree down to 25 feet and then take it 50 feet over to the next tree over here. Let me hook up the meter and uh, we'll see what we get. If the reading's any different. And that's the inverted L configuration. All right, for this configuration, this setup, I'm going to be using these trees here. And the setup is going to be the inverted V. And this is with the feed point on the ground over here, going up about 25 feet, and then or 27 feet probably, and then over to the other side and just off the ground there. I'll anchor that end off. That's going to take the 73 foot wire and make the uh, inverted V out of this. And the counterpoise will go off in, you know, maybe another direction. And the parts for this configuration are the hybrid micro, or the mini if you have that, the wire, both wires, the 73-foot antenna wire and the 25-foot counterpoise, the ground spike, and the 50 feet of coax. With all these configurations that I've done so far, the matching unit has always been on the ground, so the impedance is going to be higher. I may try another setup where we put the match unit up into the tree 
and get it so it's more like the LEFS, where it's when it's operating from the tree, there's less impedance problems, less ground loss. In an installation like this, where you're trying to set up your antenna and you're not sure quite the distance of where you're going to be at, here's one thing you can do. You can take the 25 foot counterpoise and use that as your measurement. Start at the end of that wire. That's going to be where your antenna is going to be dropped from or from where you're going to drag the center of the antenna wire up. And then your match unit goes all the way out to where you're going to be sticking it into the ground. And your other end of the wire will go naturally where it needs to be. Now I don't have another ground stake or a spike to hook this thing up to. So what I'm using is the other part of the impasse, which is the rigid antenna extension and I've just uh, rolled some paracord that I had here and I attached the paracord to the end of the antenna on the isolator and then I've come down here to the rope and I've just wadded quite a few windings around here and that's going to be strong enough to hold it and it's far enough away it's not going to interact with the antenna. So to get the center part of the antenna up you're going to use the center insulator ring, the isolator ring. There are three of them. One at the end where the matching unit is, one at the end of the antenna, and then one that slides up and down. And you're going to be able to use that to uh, hook onto your rope like I just did, and then I'm going to pull this up in the tree. That'll roughly get you where you want to be if you've set up the far end to be at the 25-foot location. With the hybrid micro set up here at the end, and the counterpoise going off the opposite direction, and the carabiner hooked up on top support here with uh, being connected to the top of the hybrid micro, the rest of the wire is going up about 25 feet up into the air. And you can see my pull rope holding it up in the air with the uh, center isolator ring. And that continues on for the 25 feet over onto that side where I've got it attached over there. All right, so I'm going to hook up my 50 feet of coax with the choke on the end, and that's going to go at the feed point here. I'm going to hook this up to the hybrid micro, and uh, we're going to hook up the analyzer to it. Now I'm going to go a little bit further away from the antenna so I don't interact with it and let's do the readings over there. All right, we're still gonna need our antenna tuner. The highest reading is still gonna be three to one, which is, again, what we expect this entire setup with the different configurations. So the configuration of the antenna, when it changes, isn't going to affect it adversely, and that's the point of this, is that you can expect the same thing. At least that's what it looks like. So those are the main configurations for the impasse. Each one of them based on the hybrid mini or the hybrid micro, using the wire that's supplied here. And now another way to set up this antenna it's called out for in the book is for doing it with your vehicle. If you've ever set up an antenna on your vehicle, this would not be in motion, but this would be if you're like at a parks on the air or something like that. You can use your matching unit and attach it to a mount that you might have. You might have a mag mount unit or like me, you have, I have the hustler mount onto the camper or maybe you have like a uh, receiver hitch mount or something. Well, so this gives you some flexibility. Those are some creative ideas, at least listed here in the book for using their antenna. Kilo 7 Sierra Whiskey. All right, Kilo 7 Sierra Whiskey, Kilo 7. Yeah, roger that. You are 5'7", five, 5'7", seven, five, seven into Utah today. Back to you. All right, Kilo, thanks for the 5'7". Yeah, you're a 5... Uh, I'm going to give you a 5'4". Five, 5'4", four. Five, four Saskatchewan. All right, now that you've seen the impasse in its five different configurations, the way the manual describes, I'm really curious. I want to try this out. I want to put the... And you, the matching unit, the uh, micro or the mini, whichever one you have, the hybrid micro or the hybrid mini. We're going to go up into the tree. So we'll get less uh, interaction, less reactance from the ground. And I just want to see how it works out. And then uh, we're going to try using the radio. What's nice about this shackle assembly is I can run a line right up through it where I've already got a loop on the end. And mechanically, that's going to be a really good connection. And I'm just going to let the 25-foot ground radial dangle. I think that's just going to be the right thing to do. Now setting up the impasse this way, it's obviously going to be a lot heavier. We've got the full weight of the match unit, both antenna wires, and the coax. So I've got to hope that the branch that it's holding onto is going to be good enough. It's going to be strong enough to hold the weight. And another aspect of putting all the stuff up in the branches instead of just doing the antenna wire is you've got to make sure the entanglement all the stuff that you're going to yank up in the air isn't going to wrap itself around it as it goes up. So that's one of the downsides of doing something like this, but if you're willing to put in the effort, uh, the results could be pretty darn good. And now I know I'm about 40 feet up in the air because I've got 10 feet worth of coax laying down here on the ground, and that's pulling straight up into this tree. The feed point is just about into the bushes, 
and the uh, counterpoise, the 25 foot counterpoise is dangling down here. So I'm, I'm in a good spot. So now I'm gonna take the rest of this antenna and pull it out here into this field and then uh, we're gonna be ready to go. Now what I'm using for this activation or I'm getting the radio on the air is I'm using my eco-worthy battery. It's the 20 amp hour version. I'm using the 857 and my LGG 200 watt uh, automatic tuner. I'm using my backpack over here with all the stuff in it and I'm just wrapping my pink paracord that I have, the nano cord. Um, around the antenna end and around the backpack because that's what I have and that's what I'm going to use. I do want to check the readings with the meter with the rig expert before I get this thing on the air. See if it's made any difference be ha between having the feed point up in the air or not. And the readings I got from my rig expert are not really different from what the manual says I should be getting and so that makes sense uh, for how it operates there. For the bands that matter to me, um, I'm gonna need a tuner, no matter what I do, whether it's up in the air or if it's down on the ground. So, uh, with that being the case, for me it's way easier to put everything you know down here on the ground, mount it here instead of everything up in the tree. Now I think there's a time and place for putting antennas up in the tree, as often and as, as frequent as you can. With the amount of uh, tanglement and the hassle that can come along with it, I'm not sure that I benefit uh, anything from that. Kilowatt 7, Sierra Whiskey. Kilo 7, Sierra Whiskey, QFL. Yeah, Roger that. You are 5-9 uh, here into uh, Utah. Go ahead. All right, you're about a 4-5 into North Texas, QFL. All right, thanks for the 4-5. Appreciate that, and thanks for your activation, K7SW. Uh, 73, and thank you. This is Kilo Golf 5, Mike Kilo Quebec. Kilo 7, Sierra Whiskey. Kilo 7, Sierra Whiskey. Hey, thanks for that. You're also 5'9 here into uh, Utah. Thanks for your activation, 73. Kilo 7 Sierra Whiskey, thank you for the call. You are 5'5, five, 5'5 five, five, five into Kilo 2792. All right, thanks for that, Randy. You're also, you're a 5'7, five, 5'7 seven, five, seven here into Utah. Thanks for your activation, K7SW. In testing out the Impasse 2.0 uh, with the, all the different configurations, up in the tree, ground mounted. I like the fact that the components are small enough where it makes this a really compact antenna to drag around, but it's big enough where you can cover all the bands from six to 80 meters. Now there are a couple of antenna configurations that I didn't show you, and that's the, the dipole, the inverted um, loop, delta loop, and the horizontal loop. Also the, ver the uh, vehicle mount, I didn't show you uh, that either. To set this up as a dipole antenna, you're gonna need even lengths of wire like you would set up a normal dipole. And I didn't have any extra wire that I hook could hook onto this to show you that way. And as far as the loops go, you also need to cut your wire. You can have your own wire or you can purchase uh, a wire from Chameleon for that purpose. And at the time, I just didn't have any antenna wire that's long enough to make what I wanted was an 80 meter loop like a sky loop and test it out. Maybe I'll get to do that over the summer. That'll be a fun project. I'm not super excited about the bag. I think the bag's a little bit too big for me, for my operating needs. It may fit for your application or for uh, someone that's uh, doing some camping or hiking and you wanna stick all your stuff in the bag. I think it would work for that. And for the vehicle mount, you can see how easy it'd be to put this up temporary. Not for driving down the road, but for doing a parks on the air activation, possibly. Now there is one more configuration, the man pack portable. Now, I don't ever do anything like that, but the design, at least in the manual, talks about being able to put your antenna together on the side of the bag or inside the bag or something like that with your gear so that you can carry this and be man pack um, portable operating. I just don't do anything like that, but um, you know that's an option. That's one of the options with this antenna. So it seems like the last few times I've been out with this antenna, the band conditions haven't been that good. So I haven't made a lot of contacts, but I have uh, made some parks on the air contacts and that's good. That helps you to know that your, your gear is working and you're getting out. So that's another bonus for parks on the air if you're unfamiliar with how that works. I want to thank Chameleon Antennas for sending out this antenna for me to review and to try it out in the different configurations out here at this park and share with you guys what it's like to use them. If you want to see more videos on antenna operating and portable setup, check this one out right here. Thanks for watching 73. I'll see you next time.